What's up guys, Mike from Rockville, and today we are going to be talking about setting up your PA package system from Rockville. Now in this video, we're going to be setting up an RPG 2X12, but this also applies to our other models like our RPG 2X10 and our RPG 2X15. So follow the steps in this video to get all set up. Let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our tripod speaker stand. Each kit comes with two and it's very easy to set them up. The first thing you're going to want to do is take your stand and loosen this bottom knob over here. So once you loosen it, it's going to allow you to pull out on the stands and you kind of want to pull until you can't anymore, like right about there. Then you're going to tighten it into place. Perfect. Now the second part of this is to loosen this knob over here. Now this top knob will allow me to pull out the top cylinder and you'll see it starts exposing different holes. Now these different holes are basically different heights that I could put the speaker at. So for this video, I'll put it at the third height. One, two, three. Then you take your locking pin, you run it all the way through. So it comes through the hole on both sides. You see it's running straight through. You let it sit. That's gonna lock it into place. And then we have our locking knob. Turn it to the right. Boom, that's one speaker stand set up. Gonna do the same exact thing with the other one. Okay, so we have our speaker stand set up. The next thing we wanna do when we're assembling a package like this is put our speakers on the stands. Now at the bottom of both of the speakers, there is a locking knob and a 35 millimeter socket to put on a speaker stand. So first what we wanna make sure we do is turn it to the left to loosen it. Then once we know that it's totally loose, we're going to line up the 35 millimeter socket with the top of the speaker stand. I'm gonna line it up, let it sit right on it. Then I'm going to rotate this to the right to lock it into place. So right now I'm going to leave this backwards just so I can show you how to hook up the actual wires. Same thing with the second speaker. I'm going to line up the socket with the actual speaker stand and let it sit right on top of it. Turn this knob to the right to lock it into place. Okay, great. So now we have both of the speakers on the stand. It's time to get them hooked up to the powered mixer. So because these are passive speakers, they require power from the mixer in order to transmit music or your voice through a microphone or an instrument. Now, all of our PA packages come with our quarter inch speaker cables. So on the back of the mixer, you'll actually see a quarter inch output that says speaker. That's where you're going to plug one end of these into. So right where it says speaker output, I'm going to plug one end right into this quarter inch jack. Get it nice and tight, you don't want any loose connection. And the other end of the quarter inch speaker cable, you're going to plug right into here. And you'll hear a click to let you know you're locked in. We're going to do the same thing with the other speaker. Now before I turn on the powered mixer, I just want to make sure that I turn the master volume knob all the way down to avoid any feedback from turning on. Master volume is right over here. I'm gonna turn it all the way off just to avoid any sort of feedback. Now, on the back switch over here where it says power on, I'm gonna flip it on. You're gonna see the LED display on the front of it turn on to let you know that the powered mixer is now on. So if you've never used a mixer before, don't feel embarrassed, don't worry. I'm gonna walk you through everything right now. You'll see that there's eight channels on this. They're exactly the same. So one is exactly the same as channel two. It just gives you options into how many different inputs you can have or how many different microphones you have or how many different instruments. So let's go over one channel and I'll break everything down for you. So over here we have our XLR input. Now this is where you're going to plug in a microphone. And the RPG 2X12 comes with two microphones. I have one here in front of me. I'll show you how to plug it in really quick. So I'm going to take my microphone. I'm going to take the female end of the microphone cable and I'm going to plug it in right here. Now, before I plug the male end into one of the channels, I want to make sure that channel is turned all the way down. So I'm going to turn the volume all the way down. And I want to make sure my mic is also off, so it's in the off position right now. Now I can take the male end and plug it right into this input. Great. I'm going to turn the master volume knob up a little bit. I'm going to turn the mic on. And I'm going to slowly bring up the mic volume. Testing, 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 testing. So you can hear me coming through the microphone now. So if I wanted to do this on channel two, it would be exactly the same. Now you'll also notice on channel one through eight, there is a high Z quarter inch input. Now high Z just means it's for instrument or line level signals. You can plug in an acoustic guitar or a bass guitar into that. So if you were playing with an acoustic guitar and a mic, you would want to make sure that you plug in the acoustic guitar into the high Z input and not the XLR input that we're using for our microphone. 
Now you'll also notice that there is a bass and treble knob at the top of all of the channels. This allows me to either boost or cut the bass or treble depending on what I want for my setup. So I could subtract or increase the amount of treble in my voice and I could subtract or increase the level of bass in my voice, which is more noticeable. There's also a reverb knob, which allows you to add some reverb to your voice. And on this mixer, we have an effects panel over here. There's three parameters that you can control for the effects. It's the volume of the effect, the echo, and the delay. Let me show you the delay really quick. So if I go for a high volume with the echo, you'll hear it sounds like my voice is echoing. So the delay is the amount of times that it echoes. Echo! Now this effect applies to all of the eight channels. So you wanna make sure that you pick an effect that suits all of the instruments or all of the microphones that are going through on the mixer. Now one thing I wanna show you, which some people get confused on, is this button over here that says 48 volts. Now this is for phantom power. So when that button is pushed in, it is giving phantom power to the XLR mic inputs. Now what is phantom power? Phantom power is something that condenser microphones require in order to work. Let me show you what I mean. So this is a dynamic microphone. I can turn it on and just by talking into it, you can hear me, right? Let me turn it off. What I have here is a condenser microphone. So if I plug it in and I talk into it, you can't hear me at all. Why is that? That's because our phantom power isn't on. Now, if I turn the phantom power on, now you can hear me coming through the microphone. So this is a condenser microphone. They're more sensitive. They require more care than a dynamic microphone. But if you're ever using one with one of our mixers, make sure 48 volts of phantom power is on. Now this varies on our different models, but on this specific models, there's a five band EQ. That's a master EQ, and that allows you to really fine tune the sound around your specific preference. One other question that we get asked a million times is how do you set up your Bluetooth device to transmit to this mixer? I'm gonna show you right now. So I have my phone right here. I'm going to pull up my Bluetooth settings. Now I need to put this mixer in Bluetooth mode. So you'll notice over here, there is a button that says mode. I'm gonna press it once. Now it's gonna say Bluetooth disconnected. So now in my settings in my phone, I go and I find this device. This pops up as Rockville. Once you hear that sound, you know your phone is connected through Bluetooth. One quick note is if you're using Bluetooth, this MP3 knob over here is what's going to control the volume. So I want to control the volume on my phone itself, then also on this MP3 knob over here. And then the master volume is going to be controlling what's coming through the speakers. Let me just pull up a song and we can see what this sounds like. Here we go. Now, if you're using an old tape deck, a CD player, or an old MP3 player that doesn't have Bluetooth and you want to connect it to the mixer, we recommend that you use the line inputs, the RCA inputs over here. So you would use a 3.5 millimeter to RCA cable, plug it in there, and you'll see that has its own volume knob over here. Now, another question that we get is, how do I integrate this into a bigger setup? So there's really one way that you can. There is a quarter inch line output on the back and you basically take a quarter inch cable, run that into the line output into another powered mixer or a power amp that would then go power other speakers. And that would be the best way to integrate this into a bigger setup if you needed it. So hopefully this video showed how easy it is to set up one of our PA package systems. But of course, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us through phone or email with the links provided below. As always, guys, I'm Mike from Rockville. I'll see you next time.